So in this problem, we are given a set that's written very compactly using an element hood test, and we are going to explicitly write out all the elements of the set as a long list in between our set braces. For example, here in part A, we are given the set as follows. We are given the set consisting of all elements x in n, the natural numbers, such that x is greater than negative 5 and x is less than or equal to 4. So if we think about that, we have here n is the natural numbers, and we know what that means. That's all the basically integers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and up. Right? So we know what the natural numbers are. So if we think about all the natural numbers that satisfy this element hood test, what does that mean? Well, 0 is obviously greater than negative 5, and 0 is less than or equal to 4, so 0 is an element. 1 is greater than negative 5, and 1 is less than or equal to 4, so it should be an element. And it's not too hard to see what happens. You just keep going. 2 is an element because it satisfies the element hood test. 3 is an element because it satisfies that inequality, so it's 4. But that's where we have to stop, because once we get to the element 5, which is an element of the natural numbers, but 5 does not satisfy this inequality, so it is not a member of this set, so we are done. And we have explicitly listed out all the elements of this set in between the set braces. So we're taking a set described by an elementhood test, and we are explicitly writing out all the elements or the pattern that that set takes on. Okay, let's do another one. So B is the set 2x plus 3 for all x in z. So we know what z is. Z is the set of integers. So what does this look like? Z is just the integers. So we know what z looks like. It's things like minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, and there's dot, dot, dots there, right? So this actually goes to negative 3, negative 4, all the way down to minus infinity in steps of 1. And same thing up here. We don't stop. We go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way up. So what are the... What does this set look like if each element has this form and it has that form for every single value of x in this set, the integers z? So the best way to do this is to start picking specific values. So for instance, we're going to have to have an infinite number of values this way, so we're going to replicate the dots there. And then the first element I have listed down here is negative 2. So what happens when x is equal to negative 2? This quantity turns into 2 times a negative 2, which is a negative 4, and a negative 4 plus 3 gives me negative 1. So I'm going to have a negative 1 there. When x is equal to negative 2, the element of my set takes on the value negative 1. What about when x is negative 1? Well, again, if I plug that in over here, I'm going to get a negative 1 plus 3 gives me a value of 1. And I can keep going. When x is 0, I plug in and I get 0 plus 3 is 3. When x is 1, I get 5. When x is 2, I get 7. And it's pretty easy, easy to see the pattern now. In my set, every new element just goes up from the previous one by 2. So negative 1 to 1 is a jump of 2. 1 to 3 is a jump of 2. 3 to 5 is a jump of 2, etc., which makes sense because this is basically a line with a slope of 2. So this just keeps going on forever, so I need to put dot, dot, dot. So I have listed out the elements of this set inside of braces. And this is what the set looks like. It consists of an infinite number of things. And some of the elements we've written out very explicitly are minus 1, 1, 3, 5, and 7. But that pattern continues positive for forever and in the negative direction for forever. Okay, let's do another one. Let's consider the set x, where x is in r, r is the reals, and x squared equals 5. So again, x is the reals. We know what the real number is. It's just the continuum of values from minus infinity to infinity. And we are trying to find the set x that satisfies both of, both of these element hood tests. It has to be a real valued number, and it also has to satisfy x squared equals 5. Well, we know from algebra that there's only two values that satisfy x squared equals 5, and that's x equals the square root of 5, and x equals the negative square root of 5. If I take the negative square root of 5 and I square that, I get 5. And if I take the square root of 5 and square that, I get 5. And we know that these are the only two solutions to this equation. And these are obviously real valued quantities. So they both satisfy the element hood test. So this set consists of just two things, negative root 5 and positive root 5. 
so that was pretty easy. Now let's do another one. Let's construct the set 3x such that x is in z, the integers, and the absolute value of 4x is less than or equal to 8. So again, the pattern is pretty easy. Everything's going to have 3 times x pattern, but there are two element hood tests we need to make sure. One, they consist of two parts. x has to be an integer, and the absolute value of 4x has to be less than or equal to 8. So let's think about this one a little bit. What is this really saying? Well, if I divide 4 from each side, I get the absolute value of x is less than or equal to 2. So this inequality simplifies a little bit. So I'm going to have to have x less than or equal to 2. If I combine that with the, the first part of this element hood test, that x has to be an integer, I can actually write out all integers whose absolute value is less than or equal to 2, and it's this set right here. So we know that x is going to have to come from the set minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, and 2, because these are the only elements that satisfy this element hood test. Now that I have that written out, I can basically take each one of these and plug it into this. So when x is equal to negative 2, that gives me a negative 6. When x is equal to negative 1, that gives me negative 3. When x is 0, I get 0. When x is equal to 1, I plug in up here and I get 3 times 1, which is 3. And when x is equal to 2, I get 6. So I can easily write out the set as minus 6, minus 3, 0, 3, and 6. So again, this is a set that has a finite number of elements, and we have listed all of them out. So those are a few examples of how you can take a kind of compact description of a set written as an element hood test and explicitly write out the elements of that set. In the next example, we're going to do it the other way. We're going to start off with kind of a pattern, and we're going to try to figure out how to write that set as an element hood test. So that's the next example we'll look at.